It is 4 a.m. in Denver. It's 1 p.m. in Istanbul. I'm Monita Rajpal. This is World One, live from London. Also ahead, the president has some work to do as the race for the White House just got tighter. The two candidates running for the presidency stepped into the ring in Denver Wednesday night for the first of three televised debates. And a lot of viewers said round one went to Republican challenger Mitt Romney after a surprisingly clean fight and a lot of talk about tax. Three, Mitt Romney had a win in Denver. This is the verdict of a poll by CNN and Opinion Research Corporation that was carried out just after the debate with people who'd watched it. 67% said Romney won. Just 25% called it a victory for Mr. Obama. Well, Wednesday's debate was one Mitt Romney really could not afford to lose, but can Barack Obama bounce back? We're joined now by CNN's White House correspondent, Dan Lovian, who's in Denver, Colorado. And Dan, how are Democrats looking at this performance last night? Well, you know, what you're hearing from Democrats is an admission that they believe that, in fact, Governor right, Dan, Romney... Dan, thank you so much for that. Dan Lothian there uh, joining us from Denver. Well, it could be the last straw. Turkey has fired direct salvos of artillery across its southern border in response to what it calls Syrian aggression. Right now, the country's parliament is holding an emergency session. Lawmakers are considering authorizing the use of ground troops inside Syrian territory. He joins us out live from Istanbul. Ivan, where do things stand right now? And thank you, Ivan Watson there in Istanbul. You're watching World One live from London. Just ahead. If it isn't breaking, Iran certainly seems to be bending under the weight of economic sanctions. Rising prices and a currency in free fall are fueling anger on the streets of Tehran. Take a look. <laughs> We want to bring in CNN's John Dev Terrace, who joins us now live from Abu Dhabi. John, what kind of impact is this having on the average Iranian? You know, well, Manita, through emails and uh, phone conversations with those in uh, Tehran and in different parts of the country, we're starting to find out that the basic food Thank you stuff so much for that. John Deptaris is there live for us in Abu Dhabi. Mm -hmm. You're watching World One live from London. Mm -hmm. Met police in Britain searching for a missing five-year-old girl are increasingly concerned about her well-being. More than 60 hours since April Jones was last seen near her home in Wales have gone by now. Specialist teams have been searching day and night. I've been speaking to the media in the last half hour with the very latest Let's go now to John Clements from uh, ITN, who is now on the spot for us. John, what did they say? Are they focusing more now on the suspect? Yes, the picture that came out today really is that there's no other person of interest or suspect other than... You're watching World One, live from London. Well, the, the reviews average. are coming in after the duel in Denver. White House hopeful Mitt Romney needed a win in Wednesday's first U.S. presidential debate, and it looks like he got it. Romney wanted to re-energize his campaign against incumbent Barack Obama after a rocky few weeks. CNN's Dana Bash reports that the Republican Party challenger came out swinging. Well, the debate was the most tweeted about U.S. political event ever. The discussion about Medicare got a lot of people talking on social media. And as you can see from this uh, Twitter chart, it was one of the highest peaks of conversation. In all, there were over 10 million tweets in just 90 minutes. Now, we want to give you an idea of what some people have been saying. Let's begin here with the political analyst, Donna Brazil. She tweeted, Romney came to play and pivot. Did he get a few good punches? Yes, but did they harm the president? Hardly. Let's hear now from another person who's quite controversial at times, Donald Trump there. As you remember, he for a time was going for the Republican nomination. Well, he weighed in by saying, congratulations to Mitt Romney. He was not only good... He was absolutely fantastic tonight. Coming up next there, also a uh, Twitter user, Kevin Campbell, had this to say. Regardless of who you think won the debate 2012 tonight, we still don't know what Romney's plan is. And Stop Obama isn't a plan. And we end with Oriandra. I hope I'm saying that right, Oriandra, saying, I honestly don't see how anyone can call a debate until the fact-checking is done. Even football reviews play. Interesting indeed. If you missed the debate, you digging in, more miners in South Africa are walking off the job. The strikes, which began at a platinum mine in Marikana in August, are now spreading across the country. Work Musa joins us out live from CNN Johannesburg with more on that. And Kapile. Well, Manita, at the moment in South Africa, we have about five major players in the mining industry. Right, thank you.
A controversial ship is on its way to Morocco to offer local women the chance of an abortion, something that's normally forbidden under Moroccan law. The boat is run by the Dutch pro-choice group Women on Waves, which brings its services to countries where abortion is illegal. It says it wants women to be able to safely terminate their fetus so they don't resort to backstreet abortions. In Morocco, a termination is only allowed if a woman's life is at risk, but according to the United Nations, many illegal operations take place and so-called backstreet abortions bring serious risks to women's health. The World Health Organization says there are around 22 million unsafe abortions a year around the world, resulting in an estimated 47 thousand deaths. Well, Morocco says it was never informed about the abortion ship's visit. In a statement to CNN, the health ministry said it has not given authorization for doctors or other parties who are not resident in Morocco to carry out medical procedures of this kind and that they can only be legally carried out uh, subject to strict conditions and with official approval. And it says it expects Moroccan authorities to make sure the law is is applied. Gunilla Cliverda is a gynecologist on board the ship, which is due to arrive in Morocco in the next couple of hours. She joins us now live via Skype. Gunilla, thank you very much for being with us. We understand, according to your website there, um, that the that the the harbor now, the marina into Morocco, has been closed. Uh, what are you hearing about this? Yes, we just uh, detected this morning that the harbor was closed by the police. And okay, Gunilla Cliverda, gynecologist, and we do want to correct that uh, she is not on the ship, but she does work with the, uh, the pro-choice, the Dutch pro-choice group uh, Women on Waves. You are watching World One live from London. Days before the Japanese Grand Prix, Michael Schumacher has announced his retirement from Formula One one more time. Alex Thomas is here with more on that in the day's other top stories. Is there anything else to talk about after that? There's not really. <laughs> um, this time it might be forever. The words of Michael Schumacher earlier today as he retired from Formula One for a second time. The 43-year-old German is the most successful driver in the sport's history with seven world titles. But he hasn't won a race since his return to F1 in 2009. World Sport in just over five hours' time, Anita. Okie doke. Thank you very much for that, Alex. You're watching World One live from London. There's trouble brewing in the South China Sea. Meteorologist Ivan Cabrera will be here to tell us about that. Yep, tropical storm headed to Vietnam. We'll have the details next. Welcome back. A tropical cyclone is headed for Southeast Asia this weekend. Meteorologist Ivan Cabrera joins us from the World Weather Center with details on that. Ivan. Yeah, if you were going to pick a tropical storm, you're going you to tell me uh, uh, which one would you like uh, to hit your area if I... All right, Ivan, thank you very much. You're watching World One live from London. I'm Juanita Rajpal. Thank you for joining us. We'll still have an update for you with the news headlines in just a couple of minutes right here on CNN.